Hello, everyone. My name is Mary Mills. I'm the branch manager here at the Cordial Chris Carnegie Library. And we are on week two of our Taste of Success Thing Kitchen um, that we're doing with Ms. Rebecca Stackhouse, our Chris County Facts agent. And today um, we're doing some special um, um, special treats that she has. I'll let her introduce more about that. Um, and also I'll come back later on to read a book based on the recipe that she cooked today. And we do have um, a special guest with us. Um, we have uh, Ms. Grace Holmes, who's going to do a pre presentation as well. So without further ado, I'll pass it over to Ms. Rebecca. So I am Becca Stackhouse and I am your family and consumer science county extension agent. So you actually see me logged in twice, so you can see the above from what I'm doing with food, and then I'll be a smaller picture that you'll actually see me. Um, but I work with UGA Extension, and I work in Chris County, and so I'm here to bring the science to you in an everyday format. And so I'm going to be doing the food demo for you, but then we have several other things that are ha going to happen with you today. And so today's theme we have... It's Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. So if you've seen the movie, read the book, it is all about the food that comes out of the clouds and raining out of the clouds. Which, funny enough, it's raining today while we're doing this one. But we're going to make meatballs. And then as we get started, it is important that you wash your hands and anyone that is helping you washes their hands as well. Those are some important steps that when you're in the kitchen, you make sure you've got those clean hands. So make sure you're taking 20 seconds under warm water with soap to get your hands clean. So we have two recipes that are kind of to make our complete meal today. Our first recipe is the chickpea gnocchi. And so I'm going to show you how to make some gnocchi. There is potatoes in it, chickpea flour, tapioca flour, grapeseed oil, salt and pepper. So those are the five ingredients that you're going to need. So we got our potatoes, we boiled them for about 30 minutes and then we mashed them. So you're going, this is actually a double recipe. So this is 10 potatoes. That's what it looks like. You're going to put it into a bowl, a bigger bowl so that you're able to use, um, you're gonna be putting your flour in the bowl with your potatoes. So I actually made my potatoes ahead of time and so I'm going to have to mix them just a little bit because they were mashed up and then they were put in the refrigerator overnight just so that they were ready to make my gnocchi. Just remember, you're going to want to wash your potatoes before you put them in your boiling pot of water. And then you're going to want to peel your potatoes at the end. And if you let them boil long enough, the pulling is just going to fall right off. Next, you're going to have your flour. So you need a cup to two cups of chickpea flour. So this is four cups, just because we might need all of it. It's all mixed in there together. So we're gonna add a little bit of at a time as we get it all nice and combined. So you're just looking to combine your flour and your mashed potatoes so that you can make a key. As you keep mixing it, you just want to make sure you get all of it incorporated together. So what I did was I measured and leveled off each of my measurings with a dry measuring cup into the larger bowl so that it was just easier. I didn't have to do a cup at a time. It was just already measured into a bowl for me. 
So once we've got it incorporated, as we're still incorporating, you're gonna add salt. So I use sea salt, so you, this is about two teaspoons of salt you're gonna add into your gnocchi. And then you're gonna add just a little bit of pepper. So it's about two teaspoons of pepper as well. And then you're gonna mix that in, kind of look for the pepper specks to get spread throughout your gnocchi. And then our last part is we add grapeseed oil. So you're going to need a measuring cup to be able to measure your grapeseed oil. So you need two teaspoons. So we're doubling it, remember, so we're going to put four teaspoons. So there's one, there's two, there's three, There's four. So we're gonna mix that in just a little bit. Looks like it's still a little bit flaky, so we're gonna add just a little bit more grapeseed oil into it. Just another teaspoon at a time. So you're looking to be able to form some balls out of your gnocchi so that you can then roll it out and cut it into little pieces. So we still need just a little bit more. So we'll add Add another teaspoon of our grapeseed oil. And then you're just gonna be forming balls that you can roll out and cut into pieces. take make sure your rolling pin's got a little bit of flour on it then we're just rolling our gnocchi out so remember when you're doing this that you need to have a clean counter surface that you've already disinfected and it's been dried and set there for the prescribed time to disinfect a surface so make sure you read the back of your bottle for that You've got clean hands with whoever's helping you or that your hands are clean. And then you're gonna have gnocchi done. So this is just a different way that you can eat your potatoes. You could make the, you can make a sweet potato one. You can do all kinds of different things. So just keep in mind, this one is just five simple ingredients and they may not necessarily be ingredients, but if you don't have that chickpea flour, you can use all-purpose flour. It's just not going to give you the same protein that chickpea flour is going to give you. So once you get it all nice and rolled out, you can do several things once we get it cut. You can go ahead and cook it and enjoy it now. You can store it or you can freeze it for later. Any of the options are good. But when you cook it, you are going to put it in a large, large pot you can boil it and it only takes two to three minutes for gnocchi to be finished. So we're just gonna cut little slices. You can be very particular and make sure they're all the exact same, all look identical, or you can let it look homemade and just have a little bit of rough around the edges. Totally up to what you want and then what you want your look to be for the serving of your gnocchi.
So if you're going to freeze it, I suggest that you freeze it on a sheet pan first and then put it in an individual bag or container to store. So your gnocchi is going to look something like this. So remember, it doesn't take more than two to three minutes to cook. Thanks and enjoy the gnocchi. Once we've got our gnocchi cut, you can either do it in a rope to get the balls or just ball up those little squares. Once you've got that, you get your water boiling in whatever serving size you're doing. And then you're also gonna need a small pan with some oil ready. And we can just keep using the grapeseed oil or if you'd like to use a different one, you are welcome to make that transition. But we're gonna boil them and they're gonna boil until they come to the top. And then we're going to transition them into giving them that crispy taste. We are at a slow boil in our pot, so we're going to drop our gnocchi pieces in. And you're going to wait for them to float to the top, which shows that they have cooked. So be sure that your handles are facing to where you're not going to have a problem on the stove. And if you got little helpers, be careful because you are dealing with hot water. So we're going to let our gnocchi boil and we're going to let it come to the top. While it is boiling, our oil is warming up so that it's ready to go as soon as it comes to the top. This is if you're going to choose to immediately eat it. If you're going to store it, go ahead and make those little balls. You can keep it in the fridge or you can go ahead and put it on a pan and freeze it and then put it in individual bags so that you can have it later and it stays fresh. So make sure that you keep just kind of a low boil. And so that might mean that you've got to turn your eye down just a little bit. As you wait for the gnocchi to come up to the top. today is meatballs. So this is actually a recipe from our food ETOP um, that is their meatloaf. Mm, so I took the meatloaf and just am using the same thing but making meatballs so we have more of those serving sizes. So what we've got that you can see is we've got the turkey and so this is a pound, no two pounds of turkey. So we've got that and then we're going to take our old-fashioned oats. And so you need about three-fourths of a cup of oats. Uh, when you're choosing your turkey, make sure that you try to get a leaner turkey because uh, this will help you get a leaner meat overall. And then the oats are going to be what kind of helps us hold that together. Uh, so we've got our turkey. We've got our oats. We're then going to add in about three fourths of a cup of onion, or it's about a, one small onion. Uh, and you can use the fresh onion, or I actually use frozen vegetables and produce a lot. And so those were actually just a frozen bag and I just measured out the amount I needed. So that means that they're already diced for us. So if you've got some little ones, it's a great way to let them help you learn some of that math in the kitchen. And then, um, I actually forgot to get ketchup, but tomatoes are going to be the same thing. And it's just taking out that actual sugar, added sugar that gets added in. So tomatoes is, you need about three fourths a cup of tomatoes. And then you need, so in our cup right here, we've got garlic powder. We've got thyme. We've got salt and our ground pepper. So 
I just went ahead and measured them out and then they're all right in there. And then last thing we're gonna need is two eggs. I forgot to get out of the fridge. So let me grab the two eggs. So the way that I like to crack my eggs is I prefer to crack them in something separate just in case we've got a problem with the eggs. It doesn't ruin everything else I've got. So we need two eggs. So we'll dump our two eggs in there and then we're gonna rinse our hands real quick. so that we've got clean hands after touching the loveliness of eggs. Uh, so if you are just joining us, you can make sure that you've got questions, you type them on into the chat box. So you can mix this however you want to mix. You could use your hands if you wanted to, um, but just mix and combine all your ingredients together your hands you're crazy why not i guess it'd be kind of fun huh? you gotta use your hands to mix things yeah you just gotta make sure you uh safety first and clean your hands after yeah that would be definitely true make sure you get your hands clean so, your hands clean. That, so that is our mix together and then you got a cookie sheet I have a scoop, so if you've got a scoop, that's a good thing to be able to use to measure it. We're gonna spray it with a little bit of olive oil spray. So this is the just how this meatball is. It just has onions in it. But do you think you could add other vegetables to it, Josh? You know what I'd add? I'd add asparagus. Asparagus. That would be interesting. Four little pieces of broccoli. Or broccoli. Yeah, broccoli. Oh, for... oh, oh, no. Green or red peppers. Yeah, that'd be good. Green or red peppers. Yeah. So if you've got a kid that's not a huge fan of eating lots of vegetables, this would definitely be one way that you can add some vegetables in because it would be mixed in with the meat combo. Sneaky. Yeah, sneaky way. We're actually going to talk a little bit more about that one on our next one. So use, you could use other types of meat as well if you would prefer. So you could do ground chicken. You could do ground beef. You could do deer. Um, you just... The leaner the meat is, it just puts that lean meat into your diet. So that would be more of your turkeys and your chickens. You could also add some jalapenos, we got a comment on. You could have jalapeno. What else could be added to the turkey meatballs? Butternut squash. Squash, yeah. Zucchini. That's what they're gonna look like. Whoop, they're sliding. Don't hold the tray sideways. <laughs> that is what the meatballs will look like. So we're gonna them in the oven for about 30, 35 minutes or until they're reading 165 on a food thermometer. And that is what they're gonna cook at 400 degrees. What your final product is going to look like so that you have a complete meal is this so it's meatballs ready and then you got your gnocchi hi everybody my name is grace holmes for those of you who have joined i am the healthier together educator for southwest district extension um, thank you so much to Becca for inviting me to join you guys today. Um, I will be giving you guys a quick workout 
Um, we're gonna call it the stormy day workout or the rainy day workout, depending on how your weather looks. Um, we're gonna get started with some stormy stretches, but before we do that, you always wanna remember to grab your water before you get started with any workout so you can make sure that you are able to hydrate while you're working out. Remember hydration is so important, not just for your digestion and for your body functions, but also it can improve your mood on a daily basis. So we're gonna get started with our stormy stretches. We're going to place our right arm across our chest. We're going to place our left hand on our right elbow and we're gonna stretch. You wanna press a little bit until you start feeling a stretch in your shoulder here. And once you feel that stretch, you wanna go ahead and hold up. It shouldn't hurt. So if it does, you wanna back off just a little bit. So we're gonna hold this for about 10 seconds. Alrighty, and then we're gonna shake it out like shaky trees in a storm. And we're gonna go to the other side. We'll place our left arm across our chest. Right hand goes on your left elbow and we'll stretch to our left. It's always really important to make sure you stretch before a workout. Today's workout is only gonna be about 10 minutes, but you can stretch it out to be as long as you want. Um, remember, you wanna work out about 60 minutes a day. Kids need about 60 minutes of physical activity a day. So this is just a little piece that you can do, but if you do it a couple times a day, um, it kind of spreads it out for the kids a little bit, spreads it out for you, and also gives you a great opportunity to get some exercise. Alrighty, we're going to go ahead and take our right arm and bend it behind our head like you're going to touch between your shoulder blades. We're going to take our opposite hand and place it on our right elbow and press down. Again, you should just press until you feel a little bit of a stretch right here, okay? And then you're going to go ahead and hold up. If it hurts, ease back a little bit, okay? I'm going to hold for about 10 seconds. Alrighty, shake it out like a shaky tree. And we're gonna go to our other side. You're gonna put your left arm behind your head like you wanna touch between your shoulder blades. You wanna grab your left elbow with your right hand and press down. Again, it shouldn't hurt. Just make sure you press until you feel that stretch. And then you wanna go ahead and stop. Alrighty, shake it out. And we're gonna go ahead and stretch our legs a little bit too. So we're gonna go ahead and spread our legs. You wanna be about shoulder width apart, okay? Maybe a little bit wider if you want, but you shouldn't be any wider than feels comfortable and balanced to you, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to take both of our hands and we're gonna stretch to our right. I cannot touch the floor when I stretch, so if you can, that's awesome. Um, but you just stretch until you feel a stretch in your legs and then you go ahead and hold up. Definitely shouldn't hurt, okay? And we'll hold here for about 15 seconds. All right, we'll come up, shake it out, and we'll go to our left side. Shake it out one more time, bring our legs back together. We're gonna put our right leg up in the air, grab our right ankle with our right hand and pull back. This swim, you're gonna kind of try to balance, but you might be swaying like a tree in a storm and that's okay. If you fall down a little bit, no big deal. Just pick it back up, do your best, okay? And again, you wanna feel a little bit of a stretch here, right through here, but you don't want it to hurt. so. If it hurts, back off a little bit, okay? So our stormy tree, let's go to the other side, okay? We'll do our left leg, we'll grab our left ankle with our left hand and we'll pull back. Pro tip, it is not a good idea to do this on tile or hardwood floors in socks. If you're gonna be on hardwood slippery floors, do it in your bare feet, okay? We don't wanna have any trouble. All right, here we go. Let's get started with the actual workout. Usually I posted a graphic in the Facebook group 
Usually what you would want to do is about a minute of each of these exercises. But today we're going to go ahead and do 30 seconds each just to make sure we're being quick. And we can go through again at the end if we want to. Here we go. We're going to start with thunder jacks, okay? So you're going to do just a regular jumping jack. But if you want to, at the top, you're going to say boom, like a thunder clap, okay? Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. I apologize, that is my puppy, he wants to join us. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stop there and we're gonna go into tornadoes. You're gonna go ahead and place your hands together like so. You're going to go around in a big circle like a tornado, one way and then the other. So we're gonna go this way and then the other way, like a big tornado, okay? wants to exercise with you guys. Here we go, like big tornadoes. If you want to get really fun, you can spin around a couple of times and then keep going. Alrighty, we're gonna go right into raindrop squats. So if you guys are ready, you can stand right here in the middle with your feet together. What you're gonna do, put your hands out straight. You're gonna step to the side, squat. You wanna bring your thighs parallel with the floor. And when you go down, you wanna bring your hands on like raindrops, okay? Back to the center. Rain it on down. You can do it as fast as you want. So windy walking is going to be like if you were walking really fast trying to get home from a storm, but you're getting blown around by the wind, okay? So we're going to try and run home from the storm. Whoa! Whoa! Pretend you're getting blown by the wind. Whoa! 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 to lightening these. Let's take a quick sip of water here. Hopefully you're out of breath like me. We're gonna go right into lightening knees. So this one, you're gonna put your arms straight out in front of you. You're gonna bring each knee to meet your hand as fast as you can. When your knee touches your hand, you're gonna say, pew, like lightning, okay? Pew, 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 pew. It's okay if you feel silly, because I do too, okay? Pew, 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 pew. You must have tired peanut out, you guys. <laughs> oh, there I go talking. All right, pew, pew, pew. Finish strong here, you guys. Okay, whew. All right, now we're gonna do shaky trees. We're gonna stand in one place and we're gonna shake around like a shaky tree, okay? So shake it out. You can windmill your arms a little bit, forwards and backwards. 
can shake your legs out. Can you shake the tree? All right, you guys. So if you want to do that a bunch of times, that's awesome. If you only want to do it once, that's awesome too. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. And um, happy Thursday. Yeah, Thank you, Grace, for our activity of exercise. So up next, we have Mr. Randy West, and he is your 4-H County Extension Agent for Chris County. And he is going to be sharing with us about um, clouds and what clouds do. So you ready, Mr. Randy? I'm going to be making a cloud in the bottle, okay? It is very simple. Any kid or an adult can make this at home in their spare time. Just remember that the ingredients you need is just alcohol. Sorry, a little bit high. Alcohol, two liter a bottle. And also I'm going to try to make a cloud uh, in the bottle in a 16 ounce. That's gonna be kind of tricky, but I think I can still do it. Okay, you also need a cork. I call it a cork plug to make sure that your air, your pressure is secure and not escaping the air. Okay, and also a bicycle pump, okay? Now, if you don't have the, a bicycle pump, that's, that's fine because I'm gonna show you how to do it without one, okay? Now, the thing about clouds is that making a cloud it's easy in the bottle, but it's the same as, you know, when you experience outside. Uh, warm and moist air, it rises in the atmosphere, and then when it cools, voila, you have a cloud, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, like I said, the first thing you need is some rubbing alcohol. Gonna open this up. I'm going to pour a little alcohol in here just to cover the, the bottom there. Okay, then I'm going to use my cork here to secure it in place. Okay. Gonna turn it, gonna shake it up a little bit, make sure all that alcohol get inside the walls and everything of the bottle. Then I am going to take my pump, bicycle pump, and I'm gonna put it on there securely. Okay, now I think I'm gonna stay up a little bit for this part and we're gonna just pump. And as I pump, the bottle will begin to get kind of warm. And like I said before, warm air rises, okay? And then when it cools, then it forms what we call a cloud, okay? Up in the pump. There you go. As you see, we have a cloud in the bottle. Blowing rings out. Oh, that's a pretty one right there. Like I said before, is making a cloud is very easy to do. And we did that one in a bigger bottle here. We also used alcohol again, and we used a bicycle pump. Okay, now a lot of kids say, well, I don't have a bicycle pump. Okay, we got a remedy for that too as well. Okay, the next one I'm going to do is going to be in a 16 ounce, 16.9 ounce, okay, water bottle. I'm going to do the same thing. I have my alcohol. I'm going to take it. I'm gonna put a little in, okay, to cover the bottom. Take it around, make sure that alcohol is exposed inside the bottom. And then, I'm just gonna get, what's it? And woohoo, look at there. There's their excuse. You're saying, well, I don't have a bicycle pump. You can still do it 
in a 16.9 water bottle. Okay. Now I'm gonna do that one more time just to show you that that was not a hose. Okay. Because when I first did it, I was like, "There's no way." But believe it or not, when I began to twist, I began to twist the bottle. The pressure in there builds up, and believe it or not, the 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 touch of the bottle warms up a little bit. Cause like I told you, warm air rises when I put pressure to it, then it begins to warm. And I twist, and I twist, and I twist, and then I cool it, cool it off. Look at this. Let me try that again. Yeah, use those muscles, Randy. Yeah. Okay. Didn't do as good as the as the first time, but it still make a cloud. And the good thing about this, as you see, when you get done with the water bottle, it's it's and it's it's not good anymore. So you just have to toss it. For the ones that have come on late, though, I just must do it one more time just to show you that. Cause like I say, I love to do science experiment and this is one of my favorite ones making clouds in a bottle last time let me see can i get it pumped at least 10 times To watch out for that rascal. And one thing that I must say that I that I forgot to do, Joshua, Joshua didn't remind me, but I should have known that I didn't have any eyeglasses on. Safety is key. So I would like to tell you, do not do this experiment without glasses, okay, for safety, uh, safety reason. Because like you said, you saw then I pretty much knew when it will pop. So therefore I was expecting that, but make sure safety comes first. So I have showed you how to make a cloud in a bottle using rubbing alcohol, a liter drink or a liter bottle and a bicycle pump. And if you do not have a bicycle pump, that's fine. All you have to do is just use some alcohol, rubbing alcohol, Put it in the bottle, kind of mix it up all along the uh, sides of the bottle, close it, use a little muscle like Josh said, and then release it because hot air rises, but then when it cools, it forms a cloud. Now I want to see you do it. Take care. Thank you, Mr. Randy, for sharing with us about the clouds. So our next up is Mary, and she is going to read the Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs story for you. Um, and so we are reading the one that is this one. Um, so uh, you do have a movie that's based on Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, but it is slightly different, and your book came first. So... Cloudy with what do you think is going to come out of the clouds? So, Mary, you ready to go? Yes, I'm ready. Hey, thank you so much, Becca, for showing us that wonderful dish of turkey meatballs and yolk. It was delicious. And also to Grace for the stormy weather exercises. We really enjoyed those as well. We can't wait to actually do those after eating that yummy turkey meatballs. And also to Mr. Randy for showing us how to make a cloud in a bottle. I can't wait to try that as well. So I'm sure you all have seen the movie Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, as Becca said. But now we're going to read the book that the movie was based off of. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, written by Judy Barrett and drawn by Ron Barrett. If food dropped like rain from the sky, wouldn't it be marvelous or would it? It could, after all, be messy, and you'd have no choice. What if you didn't like what fell? Or what if too much came? Have you ever thought of what it may be like to be squashed flat by a pancake?
We were all sitting around the big kitchen table. It was Saturday morning, pancake morning. Mom was squeezing oranges for juice. Henry and I were betting on how many pancakes we could eat. And Grandpa was doing the flipping. Seconds later, something flew through the air, headed towards the kitchen ceiling, and landed right on Henry. After we realized that the flying object was only a pancake, we all laughed, even Grandpa. Breakfast continued, quite uneventfully. All the other pancakes landed in the pan, and all of them were eating, even the one that landed on Henry. That night, touched off by the pancake incident at breakfast, Grandpa told us the best tall tale bedtime story he'd ever told. Across an ocean, over lots of huge bumpy mountains, across three hot deserts and one smaller ocean, there lay the tiny town of Chewing Swallow. In most ways, it was very much like any other tiny town. It had a main street lined with stores, houses with trees and gardens around them, a schoolhouse, about 300 people, and some assorted cats and dogs. But there were no food stores in the town of Chew and Swallow. They didn't need any. The sky supplied all the food they could possibly want. The only thing that was really different about Chew and Swallow was its weather. It came three times a day, at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Everything that everyone ate came from the sky. Whatever the weather served, that, that was what they ate. But it never rained, it never snowed snow, and it never blew just wind. It rained things like soup and juice. It snowed mashed potatoes and green peas. And sometimes the wind blew in storms of hamburgers. How awesome would that be? The people could watch the weather report on the television in the morning. And they would even, have, even hear a prediction for the next day's food. When the townspeople went, went outside, they carried their plates, cups, glasses, forks, spoons, knives, and napkins with them. That way they would always be prepared for any kind of weather. If there were leftovers, they usually were, and there usually were, the people took them home and put them in their refrigerators in case they got hungry in between meals. Look at all that fallen food. The menu varied. By the time they woke up in the morning, breakfast was coming down. After a brief shower of orange juice, low clouds of sunny side, egg, uh, sunny side up eggs moved in followed by pieces of toast. Butter and jelly sprinkled down from, for the toast. And most of the time it rained milk afterwards. For lunch one day, Frankfurters, already on their roll, blew in from the Northwest at about five miles an hour. There were mustard clouds nearby. Then the wind shifted to the east, brought in by baked beans. A drizzle of soda finished off the meal. Dinner one night consisted of lamb chops, becoming heavy at times with occasional ketchup, periods of peas and baked potatoes, were followed by gradual clearing with the wonderful jello setting in the west. The sanitation department of Chew and Swallow had a rather unusual job for sanitation department. It had to remove the food that fell on the houses and sidewalks and lawns. The workers cleaned things up after every meal and fed the dogs and cats. Then they, then they emptied some of it to the surrounding oceans 
for the fish and turtles and whales to eat. The rest of the food was put back to the soil where it would be richer for the people's flower garden. So they didn't waste any food. Life for the townspeople was delicious until the weather took a turn for the worst. One day, there was nothing but gorgonzola cheese all day long. The next day, there was only broccoli, all overcooked. And the next day, there were Brussels sprouts and peanut butter with mayonnaise. Another day, there was a pea soup fog. No one could see where they were going, and they could barely find the rest of the meal that got stuck in the fog. The food was getting larger and larger, and so were the portions. The people were getting frightened. Violent storms blew up frequently. Awful things were happening. One Tuesday, there was a hurricane of bread and rolls all day long. And into the night, there were soft rolls and hard rolls, some with seeds, some without. There were white bread and rye and whole wheat toast. Most of it was larger than they had ever seen bread or rolls before. It was a terrible day. Everyone had to stay indoors. Roofs were damaged and the sanitation department was beside itself. The mess took the workers four days to clean up and the sea was full of floating rolls. To help out, the people piled as much bread as they could in their backyards. The birds picked at it a bit, but it just stayed there and got stellar and stellar. There was a storm of pancakes one morning and a downpour of maple syrup that nearly flooded the town. A huge pancake covered the school. No one could get it off because of the weight, so they had to close the school. Lunch one day brought 15 inches, 15 inch drifts of cream cheese and jelly sandwiches. Everyone ate themselves sick and the day ended with, stom with a stomach ache. There was an awful salt and pepper wind accompanied by an even worse tomato tornado. People were sneezing themselves silly, running to avoid the tomatoes. The town was a mess. There were seeds and pulp everywhere. sanitation department gave up. The job was just too big. Everyone feared for their lives. They couldn't go outside most of the time. Many houses had been badly damaged by giant meatballs. Stores were boarded up and there was no more school for the children. So a decision was made to abandon the town of Chew and Swallow. It was a matter of survival. The people glued together the giant pieces of stale bread, sandwich style with peanut butter, took the absolute necessities with them and set sail on their rafts for a new land. After being afloat for a week, they finally reached a small coastal town, which welcomed them the bread had held up surprisingly well, well enough for them to build temporary houses for themselves out of it. The children began school again. The adults all tried to find places for themselves to be begin for themselves in the new land. The biggest change they had to make was getting used to buying food at the supermarket. They found it odd that the food was kept on shelves, packaged in boxes, cans, and bottles. Meat that had to be cooked kept in large refrigerators. Nothing came down from the sky except rain and snow. The clouds above their heads were made of fried eggs. No one ever got hit by a hamburger again. And nobody dared to go back to chew and swallow to find out what happened to it. They were too afraid. Henry and I awake until the very end of Grandpa's story. I remember his goodnight kiss.
The next morning, we woke up to see snow falling outside our window. We ran downstairs for breakfast and ate it a little faster than usual so we could go sledding with Grandpa. It's funny, but even as we were sliding down the hill, we thought we saw a giant pat of butter at the top, and we could almost smell mashed potatoes. The end. So we hope you enjoyed that story. And if you um, have the, the story and the movie, it'll be a great, great story night to do with your next food theme meal that you decide to do. And if you des decide to cook the meal with them um, that we shared today and try the exercises or try to make the cloud in the bottle, we would love to see pictures and we would love just to get any interaction that you have um, based on your thoughts of our program. All right, and I will hand it back over to Becca and we'll see you all in two weeks. Thank you, Mary, for sharing with us the Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs uh, book. So our next event is going to be on October the, I want to say it's the 8th. Hold on. Yeah, October the 8th. And so it will be at 4.30 again. We are going to be talking about tomatoes. And we are going to have some fun things that we talk about with tomatoes. So I hope that you join us. And if you have comments, please leave them in the comments. Um, if you've got any questions, then you are welcome to contact me. I will drop my contact information in the comments section, but it is um, the phone number to call the Chris County Extension Office is 229-276-2612. So you can get myself there, Randy there, or Josh. If you've got any of those questions, and we'll let you know how Josh's cricket Noki goes. It's good <laughs> and it, it's tasty. And also, there's a couple people in the Facebook comments that are saying that they've shared it or they're thanking you for the program. Well, thank you. We enjoyed having you. And if you do have any special requests that you'd like to see on the program, just send me an email and I'll put that in the comment section for you. Um, but thank you. And we enjoyed having you today.